Hi, I'm Kim Brewster, Deputy Director at Chagrin River Watershed Partners. During this informational presentation, I'm going to discuss the benefits of protecting healthy streamside areas for residents, communities, and the Chagrin River Watershed. I'll also discuss some tools communities can use to maintain these areas and the benefits they provide. I'd like to provide some more background on the Chagrin River, Chagrin River Watershed Partners, and our work with the village. The Chagrin River Watershed, or the area of land that drains to the Chagrin River, is a 267-mile area that spreads across portions of four counties in Northeast Ohio. The Chagrin River is a state-designated scenic river, and its watershed has many high-quality habitats and cold water streams that support a diversity of plant and animal species and recreational opportunities for people. Although it's a high quality watershed, it's impacted by development activities, which increase flooding, erosion, and water quality problems. Over 20 years ago, 16 communities formed the Chagrin River Watershed Partners to pool knowledge and resources to cost-effectively keep the watershed healthy as communities grow. Today, the partners' 35 members represent over 91% of the watershed in Cuyahoga, Geauga, Lake, and Portage counties. Gates Mills Village has been a founding member since 1996, and we're very grateful for their support. So we provide a variety of services to our member communities, such as providing technical recommendations to landowners and assisting communities with updates to their codes for more effective watershed management. During today's presentation, I'll be using the word riparian quite a bit. A riparian area is the naturally vegetated area of land along rivers or streams. Now, when we think of riparian areas, we usually think of the large floodplains associated with big rivers, such as the main stem section of the Chagrin River, as seen here. But a lot of riparian area is found along the many smaller streams and creeks that flow through yards and neighborhoods and in suburban or developing areas. These riparian areas provide a crucial role in helping communities with their flooding and erosion problems. These riparian areas provide a variety of free services to communities and residents, which I'll talk about next. So the plants that grow in these areas along streams are especially adapted for the high water levels and high water flow energies. These plants have strong root systems that help hold stream baked soils in place. Their leaves and stems also help to protect the soil surface during high flow events, such as intense storms and spring runoff. During and after a rain event, healthy vegetated riparian areas help slow down fast moving stream flows by giving the water an area to spread out, slow down, and soak into the ground before slowly releasing the water over the course of the year. This is better than the water um, moving downstream quickly and forcefully, which can cause downstream flooding and erosion. Healthy riparian buffers also reduce the amount of pollutants entering streams by filtering stream flows and overland stormwater runoff before it enters streams. This helps improve stream quality and habitat for aquatic wildlife. It also helps improve the quality and safety of surface and groundwater sources. For example, riparian areas are great at filtering out sediment. Sedimentation is a top water quality issue in Ohio. Sediment can impair aquatic wildlife habitat. It can cause maintenance concerns for stormwater systems. It can affect navigational and recreational uses of waterways, and it can increase the cost of drinking water treatment. Healthy riparian areas also help protect stream habitats. Vegetation in these areas provides shade, which cools the water and helps keep water oxygenated. That's important for aquatic wildlife. Shade also helps reduce nuisance aquatic plants that thrive in sunny conditions, such as the invasive Phragmites plant. Finally, the Chagrin River watershed has many cold water streams. People enjoy our streams for fishing, hiking, um, all of, around these cold water stream areas. Healthy riparian areas help protect the high quality of these streams. 
So riparian areas provide a variety of free services to communities and their residents. As you can see here, the wider the buffer, the more services are provided. So now I'm going to discuss how the free benefits provided by healthy riparian areas can be lost if these areas aren't protected. As our communities develop, our natural landscapes, which naturally soak up a lot of water, are replaced with impervious surfaces. So things like roads, driveways, parking lots, roofs, etc. And those can be a source of stormwater to our waterways. Increased stormwater from these impervious areas increases flooding and flood impacts. As an example, the top two photos here on this slide show the same property. The top left photo shows the stream under base flow conditions. The top right photo shows the stream overflowing its banks after a heavy rain event. This home would have benefited from being built farther away from the stream. Additionally, high flow volumes and the flashy nature of stormwater flows can contribute to stream bank erosion in areas where there's not adequate vegetation along the streams, as you can see from the top two photos here. On the bottom left, you can see a stream which has been impacted by silt as a result of stream bank erosion happening upstream. Streams do not stay in one place, do they? Streams actually, uh, the channels migrate naturally over time. They move and meander. Um, and during high flow events, they also expand into their floodplains. When infrastructure is built too close to a stream, erosion can lead to infrastructure damage for residents and communities. So that could be damage to things like homes or roads or bridges, etc. This can require really costly repairs. Risk of infrastructure damage is a common concern during CRWP's residential site visits in our member communities. Here on the screen is an example of a structure that is sometimes installed to prevent erosion when homes or other infrastructure are located too close to streams. These costly structures require maintenance and can fail repeatedly over time. Building this home further away from the stream in this case would have prevented the need for the installation of these structures. Additionally, when homes or buildings are built too close to a stream, it limits the ability to use natural solutions to help stabilize the stream banks because these more natural solutions require more space. In these situations, hard armoring the stream banks with hard structures becomes the only option. Here's another example, um, local example of a costly structure that was used to prevent erosion, but ended up contributing to increased erosion. In this case, the house was built too close to the stream, but a landowner hard armored the stream banks with a concrete wall uh, because of the erosion and the risk of damage to their driveway and their home. As you can see, the stream overflowed um, around the structure, leading to destabilization and failure of the structure. And it negatively impacted the home value. For a long-term solution, the new landowner had to regrade the stream bank. And due to the limited space along the edge of the new stream bank, now it, it almost reaches the home. Um, this could have been prevented if the house had been sited properly in the first place away from that stream. So residents and communities can spend a lot of money on costly hard armoring of structures um, to uh, address uh, stream channel instability and stream bank erosion, or a cheap, effective solution is to protect riparian areas, which provide many free services. Protection of these riparian areas is an investment in our watershed's future, and we can all be part of ensuring sustainable development and resource management for the long term. So now I'm going to discuss a tool that communities can use to maintain these areas and the benefits they provide. Riparian setbacks are a zoning tool that communities can use to maintain these free riparian functions as communities grow and as land is developed or redeveloped. Riparian setbacks control the location of soil disturbing activities within the riparian zone. They're very similar to front and side yard setbacks, which can be flexed with other setbacks to allow the riparian setback to be maintained without making lots unbuildable. 
Riparian setbacks are not intended to prevent development, but to find the best location for development on a particular property. Riparian setbacks are an important zoning, local zoning tool uh, because they help maintain the free services of riparian areas that we just discussed. They also lower costs to residents and communities by keeping homes, infrastructure, and other property out of the path of ever-changing streams without decreasing property values. Riparian setbacks are also a best management practice that's recommended by the Ohio EPA and help communities meet the total maximum daily load requirements of state stormwater requirements. Finally, the protection of riparian areas only occurs at the local level, as state and federal agencies regulate activities within the stream channel itself, but these agencies are not responsible for maintaining the function of riparian areas. Over 80 communities across the state of Ohio have adopted riparian setbacks. 17 communities in the Chagrin River watershed have adopted riparian setbacks or other very similar codes protecting natural areas during development, as you can see on the map here on the screen. Many of these communities have used our model code and we've worked with many of those communities through the adoption process. CRWP has developed a model riparian setback code that may be tailored and adopted by communities that wish to maintain the free benefits provided by healthy riparian areas. The CRWP model riparian setback establishes a minimum setback width to control the location of soil disturbance on a parcel. The minimum setback widths are 25 to 120 feet on both sides of a river or stream, depending on the watercourse drainage area. Our model code also extends the setback to include wetlands and the FEMA designated floodplain. The CRWP model riparian setback ordinance describes permitted uses within the riparian setback in addition to conditional uses or activities allowed with a permit and also activities prohibited in the setback area unless a variance is granted. Prohibited uses would be subject to the zoning process meaning that if someone has a project where a prohibited use is proposed in a riparian setback area, they'll be able to come into the Planning and Zoning Commission to discuss their request, ask for a variance, and look at other potential options. The goal would be to identify the best possible project with minimum impact. CRWP is available to assist the village and residents to tailor our model ordinance to meet the needs of the village. Based on our model code, structures already located within the setback would be grandfathered. These structures can be maintained and repaired, but shall not be changed or enlarged. The community's existing regulations for non-conforming structures and variances would apply. Our model also has provisions for providing variances to other setbacks first, such as side, front, or rear setbacks, to ensure that lots remain buildable while also maintaining the riparian setback. Again, the idea here would not, not be to prevent development, but to find the best location for development on the property. The photo here on the screen is depicting a property in another Chagrin River watershed community with riparian setbacks, where a variance was granted to reduce the front yard setback from 100 feet to 70 feet in order to maintain the riparian setback in the rear of the property. CRWP provides assistance to communities both through the riparian setback adoption process and we also help communities implement riparian setbacks after they've been adopted. Setback adoption assistance can include discussions with community staff and elected officials, providing tailored resources to the community to begin the discussion about adopting riparian setbacks, and also providing public educational materials. Implementation assistance can include site visits to investigate the application of setbacks for a specific site to determine the extent of the setback on the property, providing plan review for the community to ensure setbacks and other natural resource protection codes are considered early in the planning stage, and also helping the community review variance requests. Here's a draft map of setbacks in Gates Mills Village. A riparian setback map should just be used as a guide for setback implementation. It should be noted that field conditions always prevail. 
The blue shows a minimum 25 foot setback on each side of watercourses draining an area less than a half square mile and having a defined bed and bank. The orange areas show a minimum 75 foot setback on each side of watercourses draining an area greater than or equal to half square mile and up to 20 square miles. Developers would be required to delineate setback widths and water bodies when submitting development plans to the village. Now, I'll walk through a few commonly asked questions about riparian areas and riparian setbacks. One question we often receive is, how are the model code setback widths determined? Again, they're determined by the size of the area of land draining to that point on the stream. And these setback uh, code widths were based on best available technical and scientific data and with the guidance of local, state, and federal agency partners. If you're looking for more information about how the widths were determined, there's a lot more information on our website at crwp.org. Another question we often receive is how does the riparian setback regulation affect landscaping along the stream? Is turf grass a prohibited use within the setback? Based on CRWP's model code, maintenance of lawns, landscaping, shrubbery, or trees existing at the time of passage of that regulation would be permitted. Landscaping um, is considered a conditionally permitted use, so a variance would not be required just the submittal of a landscaping plan for community review and approval if natural vegetation will be removed within the setback. Another question we often hear is how will riparian setbacks benefit our community if most parcels are already built out? Local communities have experienced rising property values on aging home sites and we're seeing more examples of homes being purchased, demolished, and replaced with new and larger homes which add impervious surfaces and increase stormwater runoff in areas already affected by stormwater. Setbacks can help determine the best location for redevelopment and ensure that redevelopment takes place outside of the riparian area, which will help protect this new infrastructure from the ever-changing path of streams and add flood and erosion control services offered by healthy riparian areas. Another question we often hear is, don't we need structural solutions to our stormwater problems and not just riparian setbacks? Structural solutions, specifically those incorporating a bioengineered approach, are recommended to help address stormwater problem hot spots within the community, but we recommend uh, riparian and wetland setbacks as part of a community's stormwater management program for flood control, erosion control, and water quality protection. Finally, another um, question that we often hear are, how um, do riparian setbacks um, affect property values? Uh, in 2006, CRWP worked with Cleveland State University to um, analyze the impact of riparian and wetland setbacks on the value of parcels and communities where riparian and wetland setback zoning had been in place for a minimum of two years. The study found that property values were not negatively impacted by riparian or wetland setbacks. We actually really haven't heard any concerns um, about this from communities that have already adopted riparian setbacks. Setbacks uh, restrict what upstream neighbors are doing, um, so setbacks really provide a benefit uh, to your property. And setbacks really enhance the overall value of properties located along rivers and streams. Thank you for your time watching this presentation about the benefits of maintaining healthy streamside areas. Please feel free to reach out to the village if you have any questions about this presentation. My contact information is also provided here for your reference. Thanks.